They were fighting for viability. They were a small school that was afraid they were going to get lost. And when they came to us in the small school think tank, they were demonstrating that they'd stepped up to it and they owned their future and they were going to make that future together, including their students, and be a viable school in that district. What's special about it is the relationship with the kids. You get to know those kids so well and I can't imagine teaching in a school where, I, where that didn't happen. We have a clientele that, that's in a rural area. There's a real commitment here from the staff to bring opportunity and bring cool things to our kids. Give them top-notch academic opportunities and elective opportunities. Guitar, it was an elective. I liked the way it was set up. Like everything was kind of at your own pace and the teacher understood that everybody's at their own level and nobody had to do the same song. We have had quite a lot of freedom to try to innovate and do things differently to make things work in a school of our size. We're an eight to 12 of 125 kids, so we've had to be pretty creative in how we timetable, because what's really important to us is that we provide all of the opportunities that we can. The whole process of our evolution at Eagle River was just that organic collaboration. So collaboration is everything. The staff is small enough and are all very much in it together. We can make a decision on something or say this isn't working, what can we do to fix it? And we can have that change happening like within the next day. It's very cool to be part of the UBCO piece. Leighton himself is a brilliant man, right? and he brings so much knowledge and experience when like, we are having issues with things we want to ask questions about. He's got a wealth of information that he can bring. Oh, have you guys considered this? Or have you heard about this school that's doing that? And, and then when teacher candidates bring in what they have seen in other places and ask us some really hard questions, it's fantastic for our learning. It's fantastic for their learning. It's been a really neat partnership. I hope we get more of it because what it does is every time we talk about our methodology, our pedagogy, how we're doing things, why we're doing things, it becomes more clear for us. They're imagining things that aren't quite rolled out because some of their teachers have actually been part of the curriculum writing. The new curriculum offers so many opportunities to be cross-disciplinary and interdisciplinary and really delve into inquiry work. They develop their own questions and formulate their own answers to those questions through research and design processes. So the staff has been working with the Renewed Curriculum for four years, so they had a pretty good understanding, particularly of the K-9 curriculum, so competencies weren't scary to the staff. Part of the issue that comes out of doing interdisciplinary work is still you have to be accountable for covering math and socials and science and English. My second core course for this year was a course called Happiness. And Happiness was a cross-grade, cross-curricular course. I had grade eights to tens in there and we were covering competencies from social studies, English and science. And it was an inquiry-based learning project. So they learned how to formulate a question, how to do some initial research, how to fine tune their question, and they reflected a huge gamut of really interesting questions about the nature of happiness, like do you need to be fit and healthy to be happy, or do you need sadness so that you know you're happy? So there were tremendously fascinating questions, and each kid was doing his or her own research, and it was very cool. When I was in grade 10, we changed it to the core classes and the three-hour blocks. I really liked it because a lot of the students had a say in what electives were going to be welcomed. There was a lot, like, compared to before. I like it because we get to learn a lot of things that we're interested in, and that will help us get into the field. Especially with core, a lot of people don't like it, but I find it uh, decent because for socials we have like Vikings, War, a bunch of classes and I can choose what I want to benefit me in my choices in life. I have taught things like science of sound, and science of life, which is kind of a biology, life sciences kind of thing. Uh, I've taught controversial issues, I've taught a number of different kind of core classes. One of the levels I think we're the farthest along on for sure is involving community in the traits. 
and providing our kids with opportunities to do apprenticeships and you know the community support was amazing as the kids got to try welding and construction and joinery and those type of activities so that's been amazing for our kids I think where we'd like to go is providing some more academic connections for our kids as part of the renewed curriculum we're looking at making that that learning really meaningful and I think the more that we can tie that into real life experiences in our community the more meaningful it becomes to kids and the more they're able to apply what they're learning to what they're doing and giving them the skills to move forward so that's where we're headed. I think a big issue for us as a staff is the tracking and grading of what we're doing so with CORE there is no letter grades attached it's based on content and competencies but it's just trying to figure out how to track them in an effective manner and a timely manner. This year we've talked a lot about what is that balance between content and curricular competencies and then we're really starting to peel back the layers of how do we assess what that looks like and how do we track kids development and progress. We took a look at what competencies we were focusing on in the courses that we were offering and we realized quickly that we were all focusing on a select number of the competencies and there was just this huge number of competencies that we weren't directly addressing in our classes. And it felt really overwhelming, to be really honest at that point, because there are a lot of competencies. And then we went back through the last three years and created one page for each kid. The core, I think the idea of it is a good idea, but I think the organization on it could have been put better. I would recommend like actually stating what the classes are. They should be separated into English, math, social, science, and pick this many from each box. Rather than teaching Science 9, we teach a whole bunch of sections of Science 8, 9 combined into a core model. And so if I don't know what another teacher is teaching in their Science 8, 9 core class, I could cover some of the same material. And some kids in my class may have taken that previous course. And so now they've already covered a portion of cells or a portion of electricity in another course. And so I wish collaboration would be uh, something that we could get a little bit more time to do. We're just always learning, but that's one of the things that I love about our school and it maybe is hard for some of the staff and some of the kids, but just that constant change and trying, trying new things, I think we're modeling that for the kids. We're not finished with what we're doing. Some things are working super well, some things aren't working super well, and, and that's okay. It's not about having to get it right the first time, it's about learning with your kids and looking at the diverse group of learners that we have and making sure that we're teaching in diverse ways. You know, in a small school, we have limited staff, so we have to be very creative to make sure that we're not doing a one-size-fits-all approach for kids. And what works this year might be really different than what will work next year. It just depends on our group of learners, where they are in that intellectual development continuum and what they need to do next to move ahead.